All right, in this video, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about grades, life, and kind of work-life balance. Uh, it's a little bit different, but um, but it also might be my favorite kind of talk that, uh, that I like to give. So the first thing I like to say is that um, it it's important to remember that your grades do not define you. You know, you're here at UCLA and you know, probably one of the reasons why you got into UCLA was because you had good grades in high school or at your community college. And, you know, while you're here at school and you're taking classes, so much of your energy is poured into studying and homework and things like that. And so because you're investing so much time into it, it feels like your grades are so important. And, you know, they do play a role, but that said, um, your grades do not define you. You know, it feels, and I get it, it feels good to get good grades. It doesn't feel good to uh, get bad grades. You know, they certainly have their kind of role in, say, like grad school admissions, if you're thinking of going to grad school. But it's important to remember that they are not the most important thing in life. Um, you know, nobody, you know, when they're uh, looking back on their life, you know, thinks back and says, oh, man, I can't believe that, you know, I, I didn't spend, like, I wish I got an A- minus instead of a B plus or something, you know, that's, that's not going to be, be the thing um, that, that they regret. Um, I want to share a little bit of a story uh, from my own personal life, um, because, uh, you know, it's been many years uh, since I was in high school, but you know, in, in high school, I worked hard and I got good grades. And as a senior, I was admitted to my dream school, which was Caltech. Uh, I, I had dreams and ambitions of, I don't know, becoming a rocket scientist and working for NASA or something of the sort. And I thought um, that I would want to go to Caltech and, and I wanted to go and I worked hard and I got good grades. And, uh, and as a senior, I, I got that admission letter and I was uh, so ecstatic and, uh, and I felt like, ah, oh, yes, finally, all of my hard work uh, had paid off. And then um, that fall, I started um, at Caltech and it was, uh, it was so hard. <laughs> um, and uh, that fall quarter, I got my first uh, C grade ever and I thought, oh man, this, uh, this school is tough. And then um, winter quarter at Caltech, I got my first D grade ever. And, uh, and I thought, oh man, this is, this is rough. And then in spring quarter of that year, of my freshman year, you know, I don't know, everything kind of fell apart and, uh, and I failed multiple classes. Uh, I was put on academic probation and they said, if you uh, come back in the fall, you need to get, you know, this many, this high of a GPA. And I thought, there's no way I can pull that off. And, you know, I was, I was depressed. And, um, the, the issue was that up to that point, I had tied so much of my value and my personal identity to my academic achievement. Um, I felt like, um, you know, it's okay that I'm not a star athlete. It's okay that, um, I, you know, I don't do <laughs> go out to all of these social events because I have good grades, and this is this is where my value as a person uh, comes from. And uh, and that was fine and all in high school when I had good grades, but then um, during my freshman year, when I lost those good grades and I only had bad grades, then I started to wonder, like, well. If I don't, if my value comes from my grades and I don't have grades, then what is my value? And, um, and, and I think that kind of compounded, you know, just kind of made the whole situation, uh, you know, so much worse. Um, I'm grateful because uh, my parents were very supportive during that time, uh, you know, and, and especially my father, he, he basically said, you know, this, this dream, it's not worth it, uh, basically saying that this dream I've had of going to Caltech, um, that, that it wasn't worth kind of the toll that it was taking on my own, uh, personal and, and mental health. 
And so I ended up uh, dropping out. I ended up uh, transferring schools. I transferred to another school in, uh, in Michigan, in a small engineering school. And um, I completed my undergraduate degree uh, out there at Kettering uh, University. Um, and, but, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that painful experience because, um, you know, what it forced me to do was it forced me to separate my identity from my grades, that I as a person have value as a person, not from my grades, but for being who I am, uh, for, you know, being, um, uh, you know, who I was, I guess, created to be. And, um, and so today uh, I find my value not in my personal achievements or my um, career success, um, but I find it, um, you know, I find my own intrinsic value. Um, I find it in my faith. I find it in the, uh, the relationships uh, that I have with other people. Um, but yes, it, for me, it took a painful experience of basically losing, um, the, you know, what I had cherished and valued so deeply, you know, you know, because I was kind of forced to give that up, uh, not by my own choosing, uh, I was able to kind of make that step. And I guess I tell you the story and I share this with you because, uh, I don't want you to have to go through that same painful experience that, that I went through, but I want you to be able to kind of step back and, um, and recognize that your life, you as a person, um, are not defined by your grades. That, um, and, you know, in the future, you will, your value as a person isn't defined by your, your career or your title or your income or any of those things. Um, you as a person... Uh, have so much more value than um, what any of those things uh, can do. So, uh, you know, I want to sh share that with you just to kind of remind you and uh, I guess to let you know that I that I understand um, that it feels good to get good grades because I was that person who liked to get good grades. But um, also I just want to say that your grades do not define you. Um. I want to talk a little bit also about work-life balance and, um, you know, I like to think about, you know, where we can put our energies and I, I would say, you know, broadly speaking, I would say there's three kind of main categories where you can put your energies and that would be work, relationships and self. And so work includes anything like actual literal work, like jobs, internships, things like that. But right now, probably work entails school and academics for most of you or any other kind of professional obligations uh, that you might have. Uh, another big aspect is um, relationships. So this would be relationships with family or friends or if you're in a romantic relationship with your romantic partner or any other social obligations. And, and you might have clubs that fit both in relationships and work and things like that. And you might have some relationships and friendships that fit into both work and relationships. But overall, broadly speaking, I'd say there's work and there's relationships. And then lastly, there's um, yourself. You have to take care of yourself. And so you have to care for your physical health, things like eating well, um, getting sleep, getting exercise, care for your mental health, you know, uh, that includes sleep, but also having fun, playing, having entertainment, things that um, bring you joy in life. Care for your spiritual health if, if you're a spiritual or religious person. Um, and you know what? There's only 24 hours in a day. And it's not possible to give 100% to all of these categories. And so we as a person, you as a person, need to decide and choose how you're going to spend your time. Okay? And I believe that uh, good work-life balance is achieved by making conscious decisions and choosing what is important to you and then devoting your time and energies accordingly. And generally speaking, the more you put in to something, the more you're going to get out. And the less you put in, the less you're going to get out. And I think you can find satisfaction in life by... Um, accepting the natural consequences of, you know, the things that you're put, not putting time in, the things that you are deprioritizing, 
um, those things are just not going to flourish as much. And if you can kind of accept those natural consequences, I think you can find, um, you know, joy and satisfaction. So here, this is kind of a silly example, but, um, you know, let's say you, you're part of a group of friends and one day you get involved in a relationship with a romantic partner. And so now you are choosing to invest a lot of your time and energy into, um, you know, your romantic partner. And so because you're putting so much time uh, into spending, <laughs> you're spending so much time with your romantic partner, your relationship with that person is going to flourish and grow. But now you're spending less time with kind of your original group of friends. And so you're going to naturally get a little bit more distant from them. Okay. And sometimes when you recognize and see that there's starting to become, you're starting to become distant or they're becoming distant from you, it can feel a little bit hostile. But that's not necessarily because your friends are angry with you for having a romantic relationship, but that's just the natural consequence uh, of having less time to spend with them. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I don't think they're necessarily, you know, trying to get back at you for, um, for having a romantic relationship, but that's just naturally what happens when you spend less time with somebody and you as a person you get to make a choice about what's important to you and and i think the proper attitude to have is to say hey you know what i've been investing a lot of time with my romantic partner and now um i have a great relationship and this part of my life is blooming and um and this other aspect i'm appreciative of you know my friendship but i'm also i can accept the fact that i'm not as close as um as i used to be um and that's just naturally what's going to happen when you spend more time with one person and less time with other people and so you know when you're able to accept those kind of just the natural consequences of uh, investing less time into something i think you can you know reduce your own feelings of bitterness and jealousy and you know, find, find contentment. Okay. Um, another kind of example is, you know, and, uh, when you start working, um, you're going to, uh, meet different kinds of people and there's going to be, um, people who devote a lot of their time and energy into, uh, the company goals. Okay. And, uh, when that happens, the company is not necessarily, um, punishing people who have, um, say, a life outside of work, family and friends or something. But just naturally, if you think about from the company's perspective or from a manager's perspective, who should the manager promote? Should they promote the person who did everything that was asked of them and then continues to stay at work and do even more? Or do you promote the person that does everything that was asked of them, but then immediately leaves um, to spend time with their family, friends, or romantic uh, partner. And, you know, from that perspective, it makes sense to reward the person <laughs> who stays and does even more. Um, but that's, again, not a penalty to people who have a life outside of work. Um, it, it's just that you, you get to choose what's important to you. Um, if you're at a point in time where you say, you know what, climbing the ranks within the company is really important to me, then you should spend your time accordingly and devote a lot of time into, to, into the company and um, try climbing those ranks. Yeah. But what the kind of the, the flip side of that is that, you know, your family and friends or romantic relationships might not flourish as much during that time. Okay. On the other hand, if spending time with uh, in, in those relationships is uh, more important to you, then absolutely. Uh, spend your time accordingly and just kind of recognize that at the same time, you know, you might not be rewarded as much um, at the company uh, as somebody who, um, who who spends all of their extra time there. Okay, so um, just just be aware of that and recognize that and, and be content uh, with the choices you make. Um, I also want to say uh, taking care of yourself is also very important. If you don't take care of yourself, then what often happens is you end up operating at 
less than 100% efficiency and you're not going to be as productive. And so things like if you don't get enough sleep, then, um, you know, you, you might be cranky. You might not be as much fun to be around. Um, or if you don't get enough sleep, maybe um, you get sick or um, other things uh, suffer. Your, your own physical health or even your mental health will suffer. So, so make sure you take care of yourself. Um, I think there's a, a number of us in the statistics and data science department that <clears throat> say things like um, self-care is important and it's important to take care of your physical and mental health. Um, and these are not just um, little nice things that we like to say or little platitudes that are empty. Um, we, I think we sincerely mean it. And um, what this means sometimes, and you have to kind of judge for yourself what, what this means for you, but sometimes taking care of yourself means not completing your homework to 100%, right? If, if life is kind of too too much is going on and you just need to take a few rest days, right? And you can't work on your homework. That means you're not going to finish your homework. Okay. And the natural consequence of that is that your homework grade is going to suffer for it. Okay. If you don't turn in your homework, okay, you're going to lose points for it being late. Or if you only do half of your homework, you're going to only get half of the points. That's, that's what's going to happen. But I, I want you guys to reach a point where you can say, you know what, my own kind of mental or physical health is more important. I want to take care of my health in this moment, and I'm okay to allow my homework grade to suffer, or whatever it might be, right? When you can kind of readily embrace kind of this natural consequence of prioritizing your own physical health or mental health over your homework grade, I think you can enjoy the quarter more right? Uh, with more joy and better health. You know, if things get tough, you can ask your professor, you can ask me for um, an extension. And um, sometimes I'll say yes, sometimes I'll say no, depending on, on the situation. Um, I think I tend to be on the more generous side, but that's not a guarantee that I'm always going to approve your extension requests. Um, but even if somebody doesn't a a approve it, that doesn't mean suddenly you have to you are beholden to your grade, right? You can always just say, hey, you know what? Even if I don't have an extension in this time, I want to take the time off and I'm okay losing the points. And um, and I think that's a, that's a decision that you have agency to make for yourself. Um, one last thing I like to um, kind of mention is just <laughs> to be mindful um, of what I call fruitless entertainment, okay? So I love entertainment. I love doing fun activities. And it, I think it's super important for your own kind of mental well-being, right? I like hanging out with people. I like watching TV, watching movies, um, playing games, things like that. There's all kinds of things you can do. Sports, reading a book, listening to music or podcasts or whatever. These are all great, great things that you can do, right? Uh, when you participate in some kind of entertaining activity, though, what it should be is it should be a break for work. It should give you kind of uh, joy and mental energy or something so that when it is time to return to work, you're in a better mood and that you enjoy life. OK, um, but also, you know, th there's some activities and possibly, I hate to say it, but possibly even like hanging out with certain people can end up having the opposite effect in that these things end up draining you, right? Um, there's also kind of um, some video games and some apps and social media sites that are really just designed to be addictive. They're just designed to keep you kind of scrolling forever. Um, you know, they give you little immediate dopamine uh, hits. So you kind of keep coming back uh, round after round or scrolling forever um, and because that's how they make money. But, and you end up kind of <laughs> spending um, hours on this app or site or whatever. And at the, at the end of all of it, you have no idea where your time went and you don't feel any better. Um, you don't feel like, oh, I have this much more joy about life or anything like that. And, um, 
And in, in those cases, I, I think we should just be aware. And I'm not saying you have to delete um, your social media accounts or something. I mean, um, you might choose to do that, but you don't have to. Um, but, but do be mindful and selective about um, the kind of uh, activities you participate in and where your time ends up going because um, again you don't want to just lose um, <laughs> you know lose hours of your life for something that's uh, not actually um, making you more excited to live so uh, so that's all I have to say about that but anyway um, just want to throw that out there thanks for watching this video and uh, we'll start um, talking about R in the next next one.